Game 7. 18. Do you even know what that means? Yeah, I think if you to, wow. to kind of understand and put in context the power that we have militarily is uh, – is we are the mighty power. Like, so it would be really difficult. That's why people got to like team up or whatnot. I don't think it would go that far neither because like, I don't think countries is really, like they don't want that kind of smoke, you know? Um, but I Welcome to, to Keep, Keep It 100, 100 Conversations. Conversation. In the foreign market, uh, I think it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are looking to ditch the US oh, dollar. I just... Say, I just sent you a, a, a IG about that. This is, this is wild. Like, it's an appropriate time though. Like this. What you, what you mean by that? I know Jordan did not just run out of Wi-Fi on us. Trying to get liberated. <laughs> he paused on us. You ran out of Wi-Fi, man. You gotta do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, he gone, and he was about to go in because you know, I know that's just, that's you know he been reading on it. I don't really have much to say. I mean, I I see that it's a, I mean, the U.S. dollar been going down for a while, so I'm not surprised at the end of the day, especially as far as where we're at in society, um, and what's happening. I'm especially with China and uh, our beef with them that's happening right now. I'm not. I'm just not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Jordan would probably have a lot more to say about it. Uh, Rashawn, is this something that you're following and watching? No, um, I, I just recently seen something on Netflix, though, when Gaddafi tried to get off the U.S. dollar and put it on like a, a the United gold standard African, African currency. They just killed him. So I think everyone's been trying to get off this stranglehold of the American dollar and good for them. I think ultimately we want to kind of have this control and as long as we can for our own personal um, interest or whatever, but I think that it's just like a call for for what's it called? So I'm, I think yeah, um, I'm a fan of it because I know that America is a bully. Is they bully? I mean, we live a good life, but ultimately, um, I think that it's like we're you know. So I'm a, uh, I feel like that. So you're team China right now with? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just dropping. team. I'm just team like yo. If that's how y'all gotta get it, then that's how y'all get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't right. mad at it. Because this shit that I, we did, that we, niggas ain't even telling you why they doing this shit. They just making it seem like they so bad. But there's some shit going on, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's always so the truth. It, though, but I just feel like that. Like, I think that mentioning it, that they're trying to form their own currency, that, you know, like where. Yeah, I think for that. me, so you got China in this. And like China, I think Japan technically owns most of the debt. In the U.S., but it's by a small margin. But like China's right behind it, and then you got Russia and Putin, who's going to war right now with the Ukraine. And then like the president of Brazil doesn't mm -hmm. really like the U.S., and I think they're about to get Mexico, and Mexico has beef uh, with the U.S. because we won't let their citizens in right now. And if we keep talking trash about them, I think this can get very ugly at some point. And I think this is a power move to position either China or Russia to becoming. Um, a world power over the U.S. I think China, China. I think China got more more of a capability to be number one to the U.S. than Russia. I mean, I mean, Russia right behind them, but China they got some they got some stuff. Over well, there. yeah. So I look at this like a like a Power Ranger Megazord, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like China is the body. <laughs> China has the people. They have the technology, the resources. Um, the bootleg capital of the world. And then you have Putin in Russia, who's like the head of it. Like he is the brains. So I'm pretty sure them two are behind trying to figure out how do we weaponize this so it can benefit us or well, benefit them and hurt the US. And then they're recruiting Brazil, India. I don't know too much about South Africa currency, but like even Mexico, like these are like developing nations who are developing quickly. Like the IT world goes through India. Well, mm -hmm. South Africa is uh, is a part of the G20. So Break that all, down. Of, all, all of the, the uh, Eastern Eastern nations, China been trying to be the world reserve currency for a, a minute, for like a while. They, I, I'm looking at it like this is a prime opportunity for Russia out here shaking a box up 
they they getting everything stirred up. But if you look at because it, it goes deep, they didn't had the USSR and it been beef with the US for a minute. Basically, mm-hmm. they've been trying to take down essentially or peel back all of the damage that has been done for them over the past 50 years. And on top of that, they won't even have the population just to be able to fight wars again. So this was kind of their last hurrah. And knowing that their military is not equipped to fight anything else, they got to get with China because they got the people. China is the only one that had a uh, opportunity or a chance to be able to fight any kind of of war. And it's not going to be like a war that we think of. It's more going to be a digital warfare. It's more going to be, you know, uh, on, on a different playing field than, you know, you just trying to go over with bombs and shooting people. They not we're not fighting the same kind of war. Economic warfare is the, we don't the do that no game. more. <laughs> right, right. Like that's 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 the days of old. But when you look at how much they have on lock, as far as China, Russia, uh, South Africa, um, Iran, and uh, what was it? It was Iran and Saudi Arabia. That was the one that got me. Yeah, I because, think they're looking to join now. Like, look like half of Latin America is trying to so, join right now. Like, it's, it's well, get China big. was the one that brokered the peace between them because that was the Sunnis and the Shiites. They've been beefing before the world started. So, like, <laughs> they definitely, the fact that they're entertaining the conversation in it to any degree, it shows that people are just tired. They're tired of the shit. They're not here for it. And if you look at the, the, the currency, U.S. is Western has been the leading currency for the past about 200 or so years. And every 200, 250 years, you get another currency cycle that comes through. Because before then, it was the um, the it's pound the sterling in the British in British Empire. And so we've been running it for running the show for the past 250. And again, we've all gone through this crazy inflation. They don't pump the money into the economy. Essentially, all that is is stripping out the value of the dollars that you're telling other people to use. And no, I'm not about to use this crazy hyperinflated currency. All the other countries are like, this is dumb. And it's not backed by anything after they just stole all the gold from all these countries. Because after we came off the gold standard, they was like, yeah, 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 you can't get that gold back that you gave us. But you got dollars, though. Like, keep using those. Everything's all cool. And the rest of the world was like. I guess because we kind of relying on the U S being the world's consumer, but that's not cool dog. You can't just take everybody's gold and money and expect us to use it. Cause that's the only way that they can trade pet, uh, uh, any type of fuels. So that's where the petrodollar comes from. Yeah. Yo, I think it's so when I think about this, right, I think China, like you said, been putting in work for a very long time. Like they own a ton of different mines in Africa and almost every country. China owns some kind of real estate. I think in Jamaica, they own the highways and it's like that across like several Caribbean islands in Latin America. Like China has been building relationships with these people for a very long time. They're not just colonizing, like they're giving them something of value. It looks better than colonization. It is still neo-colonization. Neo- I mean, yeah, but like I'm not coming in there saying, hey, you're going to be my slave or I'm taking over right now. It's like, hey, you know. That's, that's why I, it just looks better. I built this road for you. You just pay me for a long and time. It's like Sri Lanka. If you end up going on a, you know, going to bankruptcy, like, yeah, we own you now, but no big deal. We gave you all the stuff. It's cool. That's the that's the play. So how do you think it's going to play out for the U.S.? Like, I definitely think this is going to happen. I'm assuming uh, they're probably going to do some kind of digital currency. It's going to go down in some some sort of altercation. Um, I definitely think that numbers wise, you've got the East that's got numbers beat, um, but on the West side, for us, I mean, we got of the 27, uh, you know, tankers like those big uh, aircraft carriers. We got 18. The rest of the world has the remaining seven. 18. Do you even know what that means? Yeah, I think if you to, wow. to kind of understand and put in context the power that we have militarily is uh is we are the mighty power. Like so it would be really difficult. That's why people gotta like team up or whatnot. I don't think it would go that far neither because like I don't think countries is really like they don't want that kind of smoke, you know. Um, but I, I, I think that uh well, just, you know, in regards to what you're saying militarily, but I think that, like, 
like long term, unless just America just changes its ways a bit, it's gonna just slowly lose lose grip of being a superpower because it hasn't been fair for so long. It's like if it don't decide to start like, you know, it's not like America first now, like it's always been. So that's why I feel like it's gonna but I don't think it'll get like that because yeah, I think, you know, I think it's even more than that. Like we have like a hundred and something nukes. We have probably like the same amount that everyone else has added up, like in regards to nukes. So it would be like a death wish for a com for a country to go to, to war with us. I don't think we're gonna go to like you said, I don't think we're gonna do a physical yeah. war, but like I don't know, man. If you got all these countries willing to team up to build something new, and granted, half of them don't like the U.S. I don't know, man. I think something can happen. I think China yeah. definitely has the capability to build whatever they want. Well, I, I agree that they do, and because it's so heavily weighted, like, once you start getting all the other countries, what I think it's going to look like is just like what Russia thought it was going to be. They're going to pull up, we're going to make a fuss, and then we're going to negotiate out of it. That turned out not to be the case because Ukraine was like, nah, dog, it ain't it. But this one is likely to be, because it's a world war, is likely to be definitely some fighting. But when the uh, CBDC comes out, they are then going to include those countries like the Saudi Arabias, like Russia, like China, and the basket of currencies to essentially value that CBDC. And when we go to a digital platform, that is what's going to at least keep all the major powers happy enough to be able to say, all right, let's all be peaceful and glow with this you know, global currency. Because outside of that, the only other thing that's a black swan right now is AI. And depending on how that's weaponized, because it's going to be, it's going to be weaponized and it's going to be both benefits and it's going to be crazy drawbacks that come from it. And that is, I think, the thing that I personally don't think is predictable. I don't necessarily know exactly how that's going to play out. But as far as like, it's a stalemate. You got way too much power in the U.S. and the supply chain and how it's connected throughout the world will shut everything down. But Russia, China are still, even though they're developed nations, they still got a whole lot of people in poverty. So one, they can't really afford the war. A lot of the people would die. But Xi Jinping... He not super pressed about that, and nor is Putin. And maybe some of the other countries, uh, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, they might have a little bit more of an issue with that. But again, I think it's going to get to some sort of peak of conflict, which bullets and, and stuff is already flying. Like, it's just in different areas. You Even just don't like, see. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but isn't that like, I know you're talking about the AI being like the, the toss up or whatever. Uh, but isn't the U.S. already kind of tracking on that with uh, China? Because, like, the whole TikTok thing, right? I don't really think they're worried about people in the U.S. really using this TikTok app. I think they're more worried about collecting our information, really understanding our patterns and what we consume on a daily basis uh, so they can target things to us digitally. I think China been playing the long game. If you if you diminish a, a whole population of another country's, essentially target their youth, and if we're talking about, oh, this is terrible for their brain, it's melting them, slowing their attention spans, whatever, whatever, poisoning. If you got just a generation of people who, whether it be through addiction or whether it be through just changing up their mindset, that's a form of warfare. But again, that's a long play. And China always take the long game. Like, that's how they, they've always moved that way. All their major mega projects have been like, 40 and, and 75 year projects because they really got the they got a I guess a communist you know type of movement like we're gonna do it for the greater good of the country and so whatever we got to do now so that we continue to increase we're gonna do it and if that's just the long game and hoping that at some point we weaken the current power that be hey cool we we might 25 years we got time we'll wait Yes, hold you, Jordan, know all the stuff about it. So. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like this kind of – okay, go ahead. No, I was great. I was great, Ask, how do you think – because I heard this thing about TikTok, right? I heard that the United States is about to ban TikTok, and that's a whole thing. How do you think that we're going to react? Because TikTok kind of been kind of thing, for real. Like, it's been – a go-to in the social media. People are now using it for business. It's addictive. Like, it's a real addiction, 
TikTok have developed. So now that it's going to be banded, maybe in a couple months or weeks, we don't know. How do you think everyone is going to react? I think I got what's it called, uh, fucking the uh, the industry, like the other social media, like conglomerates, they'll pick it up. So YouTube, already- YouTube Shorts, Twitter, like someone will pick it up. But I think the bigger thing at play was that fucking clip of the United States congressman asking the TikTok dude questions about TikTok. Did you see that? Yeah, he said it's not my responsibility. It's up to the parents to no, monitor no, no, no. what their children are watching. Like the, the, the fucking question, how basic it was. I yeah, I'm saying that was one of the question. questions. One of the right. questions the I question saw was this congressman was like interrogating the CEO of TikTok and was like, well, so his first one of his first questions was like, can can your software or can TikTok gain access to our private info, can gain access to our Wi-Fi in our home if it's on? It was like the most basic ass older person. You know how when your parents ask you some dumb ass shit about the phone or just some basic shit? Like it was that kind of question. It was so basic that it just shows that you know the people that are running the government and that are even they're so out of the loop and just think about it like you know it's like after our generation the older you get the more like all right they're just using facebook or something but the older you are the less really like you know less the less you know about social media the less hip you are and like the older you get the more you know solid your mind becomes so it's just so many people that don't even fucking know most of the world that 40 and above in a way that are kind of like, you know, since it, since this in their own it, bubble. It, 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 yeah, it was like, yo, why are we even giving or letting them be the ones to dictate what needs to go on in a way? They're so like in the past. So I think that's what that shit showed to me. Like, I'd much rather have the Elons of the world or like these, these, you know, kind of like relevant in the know CEOs have more of the say about like what's going on because you can't. Like they don't know, you know, our grandmas okay. don't know. And they're that's not on TikTok. Yeah, so like, they're not I, think on this, TikTok. I think this ties back into the first question, right? That we uh, went over, right? Are we better than what our parents thought we would be or are we doing what our parents projected us to be? And like you were saying, Jordan, if China's playing the long game, let's say they're trying to dumb down this generation um, by using social media and TikTok. And that's, you know, we all want to be social media stars and content creators. And we push that on our kids potentially. So instead of our kids being engineers and thinking of what's next, now they're trying to be um, content creators and superstars. So then China or any company country really has an opportunity if they're playing a long game to then come in and really overpower if we're not thinking the same way the Chinese are. I, I definitely think for sure, like policy makers and regulators have continually been getting out of touch but that's two part because they're old. And as we as a society like go forward, technology is developing at like such an exponential rate. I can't even keep up with this shit. Like, let alone right. these, bro. This is a fact. Exactly. Yeah, bro, I can't even work my exactly. camera right now. You expect somebody over the age of 50 to really know what's going on. So that's, that's the first part. It's another fucking circus show in the what's it called? Just like the other shit we was talking about. It's all a circus show. Like it's like all funny. Like if you really use your common sense. Like it's like the reason it that is. we were perplexed and shit. Like really good TV. Like yeah, what? This is like this is. Yeah, this but that's not that's our culture though. That's the culture of the U.S. Like no one thinks of the U.S. as really being serious and about their business. Even with the presidents, like people joke on Biden. Like no one really takes Biden serious to be the world's. Pre- I mean, the U.S. president. Excuse me. Um, so I'm pretty sure other countries are thinking the same thing and seeing that. Like hey, like let let me shine right now. Let me get in the spotlight and take over. Because I don't think they're I don't think they're doing it right anymore. Yeah, I, I, it's probably some bit of propaganda too. Because you've got your country's propaganda, and then what you hear, like all the stuff I know about uh, Kevin Trudeau, has all been like. My nigga, you know about Kevin was on live today, homie. <laughs> you know, was, I, mean, I was gonna say I don't even know who that is. I'm about to Google him real quick. <laughs> This is Canadian a- prime minister. Right, what's his name? Bruh, Kevin, Kevin Trudeau. Trudeau. Canadian essayist. Bro, hold on. Convicted Froster, oh, known for goal, promotion bro. of his the books. Goal. The goal. Bro, look Kevin Trudeau up. Bless yourself. Yeah. <laughs> bro, I got I got his Wikipedia up right now. 
<laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> even even if you uh, you're just talking about Xi Jinping and and Putin, like we have personas of them, but their countries also have their own personas of that that individual, and based on their own propaganda too, and then their little bit of external media that they might get from another country that maybe gives them an unfiltered version of what their leadership is actually doing. So, like, I don't think that we all have a really good understanding of the leader's position and then what other people's perspectives are on that leader position, too, because we we so in here. We so, like, you know, bombarded by all of our own propaganda and then what other – I mean, you know they've been messing with our elections, so how they can't, you know, send propaganda on – instagram and and facebook and all the things so like we're definitely getting some skewed perspective and opinion of all of the leadership but that dude is old i don't think that that's a thing that we can we have to argue about <laughs> my he boy knows. be falling asleep like who who bought it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, this is bro problem. wasn't he supposed to be at like the nashville shooting event and they put him on camera talking about ice cream before he went up. The fact that we elected an 80 year old man to run our country, bro. Like this whole shit. I was thinking the same thing. You know, like bro, it was either, not young. Act like this, you should laugh. Like and in regards to something else you said, like how everyone sees us as a joke and it's very true. Like, yo, I've one of the benefits of being, you know, I'm I'm real, real well traveled. Like I've been to a few other countries, one in particular being China. And like, yo, when you really go to these other countries, you know, you really realize how much each country is in their own bubble because of, uh, you know, fucking language barriers anyway. So like the shit they tell us here is like just our bubble. Like I have, like I live in a little small um, Portuguese, Brazilian community. They listen to like their hip hop. And so they're not even into our world. So it's like it really- going to be bumping too. Yo, but it's like, you know, people are, it really is country and they just be having a, so what's it called? Um, you, you know, they it, it really is like what you said, uh, Jordan. Like, you know, it's just the US drama. I feel like these are different news stations, you know what I'm saying? Like, the country is like news stations, like, we really don't have a collective view, definitely not. I like to watch Sky News report. You guys ever heard of Sky News? Yeah, yeah, see, you know, like, but yeah, if you listen to some shit, this shit is like, you know, it, they keep you dumb, like they do. And yo, Jordan, I want to talk to you about this, like, definitely even after or during this podcast truly made clear that I want to speak to you after in regards to fucking getting on and speaking about clean energy in the way that we do in this same fashion, but also keeping it real and articulate and not speaking about things that continuously like, you know, put us in that, what's it called? Cause like, that's how we have to, the way that we get out of that persona is to like not buy into it no more. I think that like, we should embrace our intellectualism. We should embrace like, what's it called? Cause it's like, like words. So I just, that's how I feel about this shit. Cause I feel like everything we spoke about is like in a joking way. I'd be like, Oh, like, you know, it's like all a joke. Like the president is a joke. The man didn't, he couldn't walk when we elected him, you know? And then we talk about what he, that's like putting grandma on the football team. And, and then the last one. Get right 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 <laughs> Cause she can't get a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> and then we talk about it though. Like, as if like the shit is just, it's, it really is, you know, it, it's just nuts. And, and yeah, you know, so should we put yeah. Trump back in office? Yeah. I mean, he got locked up. <laughs> <laughs> he got locked up. Yeah, that was what he said. I mean, free my man Trump. Like, <laughs> my taxes are looking good. I know. I see that. <laughs> I think Trump was great, you know. But there's so like he's the best. Patrick Bad Day would be great, but you can't even say that because there's so much powers behind it. Trump but, was great uh, because he was trying to saying. get. Well, Trump's a good businessman. We don't. Yeah, you I know, don't you could. Yeah, you could try to be the president. Once you go in there, you have those conversations. You have that conversation, like nigga, you could do this much, bruh. Which like, is like this, bruh. Like of all, you're not the really. You know. So then we, yeah. So yeah. Trump was like, what well, I think, what the most gangster thing about he's so many gangster things, but just top gangster thing is he didn't do. He didn't take any campaign money. Like bruh funded his whole own shit. So like, if you really, you know, like the only president in the world to not be like brought. And then so, he gave away his checks. Because that's not shit, bro. For a real mm-hmm. businessman, 400 grand a year, that's like a measly, that's like a, you know, average entrepreneur salary. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, not really. Average entrepreneur is not. It's 75 grand. But like a successful entrepreneur, you know, with some investments should be making four or five a year. So the president don't get paid that much. So like Trump wasn't in it for that. Like it was much deeper. But because that's why from the beginning he was so criticized. Like 
all the powers that be needed to paint this narrative around him as if he was a bad guy when the motherfucker was like it, it, it wasn't it just gets so deep so um that's what i think that he's our best bet personally it, yeah. if, if i if would i would i say that there was a better yes would i say that of who's been in office i mean yeah the, the money part and not having those ties especially like not needing to be reelected or to rerun is a really big thing that's why i would say that like you know uh obama's you know last years were probably some of the the better policy side of things that he's done but like any any uh elected official that has any ties to incentive which is money you can't we can't operate the country you should change the sentence you said every elected official that has ties to money like it's no. not any it's not any because all of them have oh they, that, yeah, yeah exactly they well, yeah, man, look, all, look they at lobbyists bro they get they paid them. to convince That's, people that to is pass illegal. laws in their favor i don't i don't understand how we have not just not been more of a conversation about how illegal that is but like bro what i can just as long as you got enough money you can make sense in essence buy a law i want to purchase this law oh you can't do that the people have to go and say well, now you owe me all the favors that get done and backroom deals. And this is how politics works is a favor for a favor. So now if favors have been bought and purchased, that means that you are, in essence, buying laws. I don't understand how that slipped under the radar because, because that was not a thing that was never around. The age of Aquarius didn't happen. And all that was just previous energy is the way the world was, what, what disgusts us and what is our job to fix. It's just the way shit was like, you know, it actually is just on a, the highest level. It's just like, that's the way things was, but we coming into a different enlightened era. That's why everything's so bothersome to us. And we the first ones in it, but you can't really like say like, you know, motherfuckers have no cameras in the past, bro. Like couldn't even do this type of shit. So niggas was doing whatever. They didn't even have a conscious, like what the call like that. Niggas wasn't any conscious like that. Less it accountability. Was, like, yeah, it wasn't spirit. zero accountability. Is it really me? less accountability? Because I feel like these cameras, like uh, unless you're at a certain bracket, like these cameras still don't mean anything, man. Like if you're a politician, that's easy, bro, you can't you, kill you. Like if you're a politician, you can do it. I won't say you can do whatever you want, but like all of them bend the rules in some capacity. Oh, do you oh. know? Do you know who uh, Ed Abagnale is? Nah, my, what's his name? That's Catch Me If You Can, bull. Oh, you mean that's Leonardo? Oh, that's the real the, one. The real guy was he was a real person. It was a it I was a I didn't know his name though. The reason he was able to get away with those things is because of the unchecked accountability, especially for white dudes. But just generally, accountability was so low in the daggone sixties and seventies. You talking about cameras? Like it bruh, was bruh, less bruh. security, yeah, all yeah. that stuff didn't exist. So the only way that you could get away with this stuff. Is if you have savvy technology. So can you know? Do you know how to? You can't even it? know. You can't even know back then. It, and yo, I, I, so do you think that's yeah, happening yeah. now? Though, like, do you think we're getting politicians now with all this technology well, around? Obviously, things are changing. But I want to just share something with you guys. And this really is a fucking what's it called? Like this, this shit brought brought, brought feelings down into my stomach as the documentary concluded. But it's the uh, documentary on Netflix about uh, the Ponzi scheme. And the dude that, uh, what's his name, Ponzi, what, not the Ponzi team, sorry, um, Madoff. Madoff, the Madoff. Madoff. Shit. Mm -hmm. Yo, you okay. seen that shit? Nah, I didn't Yo, I know about it, though. Right before the, uh, the 2008 collapse, like, watch that. And it will outline the amount of willing, willing corruption that goes on. You know, it actually, like, it makes you sick to your stomach. But, you know, we're speaking just about the surface level of it, but... That shit really shows you that. Um, and that's just what we have to change, I feel like, because we can't harp on how bad it was because that's they old down. Um, but I think everything has to change because the whole system was back was based upon that type of energy, that type of shit. Like, you know, and well, we, we talked about this, I think, on one of the other shows. But one of the things that I see the difficulty in being able to make those changes you you fat you rewind back 100 200 years where there were way less people in a country in a state to talk about collective action and making votes now it's like trying to herd cats especially with the fact that everybody's got this 
you know, it's a cancel culture and such like the stratification of society. You can't get anybody to uh, to agree on such nuanced details of a specific law because that's the only way you can go and appeal something. And to make like actual change, it's everybody's got to say, this is the one thing we're going to focus on. Everybody vote on this. All say I. And that's you got to go line by line. And somebody's going to be like, well, I want mine to go next. And it's a thousand and two on the list. So that now we're talking about the system is very difficult to start to try to peel apart or break or to mend. And that's why I think a lot more people are on the other side. You've got so many people that are radicalized because they see all the corruption and all the difficulty it is to talk about making, you know, true change because I, I hear a lot of people talking about it. Go out and vote, you know, the local levels. I do these things and I do think that they matter because outside of that, it will get way out of hand very fast because we already are experiencing a lot of these things about what impacts us on a regular day, inflation and how much we got to pay for groceries and gas. All these things are based off of collective decisions that over time continue to build on each other. And the only thing that we can do is use these mechanisms to say, hey, we don't want that. We don't like that. And we have to continue to do that over and over and over and over again when that's all that they do is get paid all day to say, hey, figure out how to make this happen. Appease these people, but make this happen. That's your job. If you want to get paid and want to get reelected, that's what you got to do, baby. Yeah, what's going to happen is the whole system has to break completely. 150%. You can't even... You can't repair it. It just has to be. Repaired. So many people are gonna die though if that happens. That's I mean, the only thing. No, I mean, that's, like, that's why. Yeah, but we like, ain't even like the, we ain't even like the auto industry fail. Like I don't think they're gonna let the government fail on break. I mean, bro, the government ain't shit. Like this if shit we, is built on is built. We shouldn't even have to have a government. Shouldn't. I think the age of, this in a, age but of a world, perfect world though. But yeah, we so, not I mean, that's, what we, that's what we're trying to go towards in a way. I'm just that age of Aquarius shit. It's it's time for that um, because it just is it's an unsustainable model like that we're on right now trying to fix one and i oh, feel guaranteed. like individuals like us that is the first you know ones because you know it's going to change especially like it's going to change the internet changed the world but we're just at the cusp of it um and just have to accept like we yeah we're like i think that this gets deep i actually on my channel um wrote my two my two my two most recent youtube posts um i had written i do a lot of writing i journal a lot um and I'm real in touch spiritually and sometimes I'll be having these like journal entries where I just feel you know super like in a channel type of uh energy and it was I have written some shit and then I wrote like what I call the declaration of uh the new realization or something like so I feel like the world needs a new declaration of independence like a new way forward in a way and that's way ahead thinking trust me I know but you know, go take a listen to that shit because it was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I just feel like that. Like we can't even re-break, we can't remake this shit. It was all based on a failed system that hasn't worked, you know? Um, so I think I'm ahead of my time, definitely. But it's like, yeah. I, I, I would love to see that, you know, happen in all of the enlightenment. I think too many old people are still alive that if you talk about human nature and course, their propensity to change... But then they're, they're losing power slightly and we're gaining it. So I'm talking 20, 20 years from now when those ones that have it are dead, like it's going to, they're not going to be there to hold it back. We're still, they're still holding on power, but it's slowly changing. Like even us coming into ourselves and kind of being the new leaders of the business world at this point, we're not like young in the game anymore. So over the next decade, we're going to be the ones kind of jumping into those positions that are taking over, you know, and and hopefully it's not poisoned by the pre-existing system because that's one of the things that I think has been such a powerful force is the corruptibility of I think, I humans. think the internet changed that. The internet put a lot lesser damping on that. Like, you know, it's I feel like with the internet, it's so much harder to do like it's so it was so much easier before to do a lot of corrupt shit, especially with the age of Aquarius shit too. People was feeling more drawn to their spiritual nature because it's just the energies in the world. So um so I'm enjoy it on this one, man. Well, Humankind is a corrupt being. Like, I, I feel like no matter what age we in, or no matter what we do, like, if there's something that I want and I know I have the potential to take advantage and get that, like, dude, I'm gonna do it. Like, humankind is going to do it. Like, I feel like that's human nature. Like, no matter who we put in office, 
unless we have clear checks and balances and a way to really hold people accountable, um, then like I think we're always be in this cycle. Like we may have better laws at the state and local level, and maybe at the federal level, depending on what it is that we're going after. But like I don't think we'll ever really get rid of true corruption. Uh, especially when we talk about the government, like there's so much stuff that we do against other countries and they do against us that we just don't really know about that's considered corrupt. Um, but for the government, it's really considered part of the job to keep the country safe or to further whatever uh, agenda that we